Now this show is only possible due to you watching, so thank you for watching. I appreciate that, and I appreciate those of you that are subscribing as well. So let's get it. Hello, model citizens. Welcome to Four Nine Four Garage. I'm DS, the plastic mechanic. And welcome to a new series, this is Beginner Builds. Today we're starting on a new scale diorama. We're going to start off first with a classic Fujimi Garage and Tools kit, number 28, in the set of remixes. I don't know why it's number 28, because I've only ever seen five other sets. But anyway, it might look simple, but this is a pretty detailed kit and hopefully it's going to be a challenge that's going to work out in our favour. I've already got some of the bits that are pre-built for this diorama. I've got a wheel balancer, a tyre mounter and an engine hoist. But let, without any further ado, let's get into this Fujimi kit and rather than going straight into the box let's try and work out what it, some of this um, Japanese says on the cover let's have a look okay so the first thing to point out is this is a madness if you don't speak Japanese don't try doing this using the app at least do if you want to get some jokes exhibit A the Y scan is a male we have a different simplified place than the actual product content. Approve it beforehand. Hmm. Now I don't know how this was, how Japanese works. I don't speak Japanese as already stated, but I'm sure that says Mr. Kara. Mr. Kara, the color number of the paint that can be used for this key. HB is a stock G. High La C is Mr. Kara because you know Mr. Color Paints I'm sure you're supposed to say it with a Japanese accent I'm not sure how useful this is to you but we're gonna keep going because how else you gonna know be sure to read it to your parents please read the assembly instructions before creating the parts pointed to the convenience of the goods and small there are parts at home with small children the same in the creation of the model I use Yasunafu. The same because there is a risk of injury at the cutting edge. Ten years old. Yeah. Yeah. Official. Ah, oh, luckily this has got some English on it anyway, so this should be a straight translation. Yeah, one's clearly saying recommended for experienced modelers age 15 and over and the other saying the package is the role of transportation packaging materials due to some damage because I cannot do exchange correspondence approve it cool on to the others in the series there you go you see you might have thought I was just being funny about the Japanese accent, but Gaji and Tozi, number one. <laughs> you can't blame me for laughing. You can't blame me for laughing. That's what it says. Ah, you see? Not Lee. I'm gonna look that up because I know that means something. Gaji and Tool Tsules. Ah, you see? Ah, you see? As long as you try to say it in English, then you write it in English. In Japanese. In English. In. No, hold on. Gaji Atsules. See. 
number 26 no ore to no ore to see number one and number two man and finally which says number 27 right there but gaji and tozi number 27 three star perfect what's this on the side there the photograph is a state in which the product was painted and assembled ah uh, good you're not going to get confused and think that it comes in the box like that other than the kit in the box you get the instruction manual so let's just check that out quickly as well now this has got several languages on it english being one of them fortunately but unfortunately the english is largely a madness as well so i'm not going to read every part of it so i'm just going to read a few highlights number one read the manual before you start assembling now that is exactly what you should do number three after taking the parts from the plastic bag ear up the plastic bag little child may wear it over his head only to be suffocated see valuable information number five metallic and plastic parts they may cut your finger hand or foot if carelessly handled wear gloves now this one is actually quite serious number six while assembling the kit place the parts in the cut off chips on a flat place out of reach of little children these pieces may cause suffocation if swallowed they may also cause poisoning if licked or chewed poisoning if licked or chewed so yeah number one read the manual before you start assembling people now this thing about this japanese english translation thing is really interesting here if you check out the numbers there 421 1 toro that's what it says right 421 1 toro but when you see the translation 4221 all right now it's calling the place a different place but anyway 4221 not 421 4221 i don't know someone inform me now at the bottom there we've got the color chart for doing the box art but i am not going to do the box art we're gonna do this thing a little bit differently okay page two or page one if you weren't interested in any of what i was talking about on page one is basically the parts list and some other japanese writing the parts list as you can see i've written my colors down because it's good to have a plan before you start and <laughs> and the bottom part is a complete madness that says just not when you order a bar please do not send cash in advance or encountered they are very delicious it's just madness if you want to pause it and read it good for you moving swiftly on the general assembly instructions are really good they're really clear everything's pretty much to scale so it's very easy to tell which part is which you get 15 diorama pieces in the box and they've all got the potential to be taken to a next level so i highly recommend this kit it's not surprising it's a classic kit you can go ahead and pause it if you want to take a look at all of these in the instruction manual but i want to get on with building so it's moving swiftly on I'm going to be using the selection of Alejo materials to paint this diorama and I'm going to use their model layer range, their wash range and their game colour range. Now I've chosen these paints basically because I've been told that they've got very fine pigment in it. So as I'm doing small models I want the paint to look in scale to the model so let's see what this range can do. Good luck Vallejo. I'm also going to be testing out two types of primer, a spray enamel primer and an acrylic primer. And I don't know, maybe I'll find a difference, maybe I won't find a difference, but this is the point. So let's go back to the studio. 
Okay, so I've got everything out of the box, all of the sprues, and I've broken down some of their parts into separate bags. So this would be the, the wrench, the wrench device. Uh, this would be the air conditioning machine. Um, one thing I am going to say is as a beginner you might be tempted to use pliers, toenail clippers, anything to get the things off the sprues but I gotta say it's best to get a good set of sprue cutters. I don't know if they're going to be called sprue cutters or hobby cutters or side nippers but get a pair that I don't know if you can see like this I'm definitely going to put a photograph up but get a pair that line up completely maybe you can see down there you can see the reflection where they're not quite lined up with each other and all those little bits sticking off the edge they are annoying on small stuff annoying it's better to get them first time you can see on this pair that there's no raised edge they go to exactly together they're pretty much 180 degrees across no it's not it's about 170 degrees but it's much better you get a much better finish you don't end up with these lumps sticking out of the side here that need to get cleaned up we're just going to take that off now bam not quite bam there we go bam there we go Bam, simples. Not bad. Bam, 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 just like that. So, tip number one decent sprues cutters. Now, another tip coming in. Well, I'm, you know what? When I say beginner builds, I am the beginner building. I've got a fantastic kit collection, but I'm new to this whole hobby. So you know what? We're going to learn this together. Now, tip one, sprue cutters. Tip two, if you're going to do a kit like this and you're going to take all of the parts off and bag them up so that you can do different colors and stuff like that, I'd say that's a good idea. Easy to stay organized, but do clip some of these off into a plastic bag these super small parts here where are we like these little wheels and parts put the whole sprue inside a plastic bag and then a see-through plastic bag and then clip it in the plastic bag because these can fly off and if you've got a carpet these are real hard to find once they're gone so clip tip one sprue cutters tip two Clip the small parts into a plastic bag. All right. Tips. I've heard, because <laughs> we can do tips that I find as I go along, or we can do tips that are generally known. I've heard that test fitting is the way forward. So let's test fit on a tire rack. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting. Oh, sorry. Now, obviously, I wasn't expecting to do a time lapse putting together a tire rack, but hey. Oh, my days. <laughs> Thank you. 
And plus four. Now what you can see. Now I'm hoping that this is really in focus. That's all my I'm hoping. But right here, it's got a little box housing. And as long as you get these things in the right way around, at the bottom, it's not too difficult to position the other one on top. And then you end up with a tire rack upside down and the wrong way around. Look at that. Look at that, people. Whoop, whoop. What a genius. So, we take that off and we do it again. Let's just bang that on around there. And this time, I'm going to notice which way around the shelves are. Which makes a lot more sense. So back to the clean up on these bits. Try not to make an over chop on that. Don't want to chop into the side of the leg. Bam, bam, bam. All of them done. Except that one. Six little knobs. Three on each side. Bam. Next. I'm going to take a little knifey schnifey. Something I've seen people doing is using a knife to slice these bits off rather than sand and personally I can't see why you would want to do that that is madness that is just waiting to jank into the side of it so let's try a nice metal file now really you might be thinking, I can't see what you're doing. I can't see. Perfect. 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 You should shout from a different angle. But realistically, I believe that I can't see what I'm doing either. I'm doing it all by touch. I don't really think there's a way. Let's see. Let's try and prop it like that. That's not going to work, is it? and light or slow and hard and I'll find out which one's working and that's not bad bam 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 all right now I've done eight of them and I'm starting to get a bit more confident 
to get them off. I've got a fair idea at how. Look at that, as I'm talking, it's just gone straight in. That's, that's what beginners do though, innit? They get cocky real early, innit? As I was saying, I know how much it's gonna wear down. I make a little divot, but if you can't see it, I'm not gonna point it out until it's time to point it out. I'm trying my best not to squeeze where I'm holding it because I really don't want to bend it while I'm sanding it. That's something that could happen. So, trying to avoid that early. Bam, not bad. So now we've got this piece uh, cut away from the sprue. We've got all of the little nub remainders trimmed off of the back and sanded flat. Time to put it together. Now, I'm gonna use some of this Contactor Professional Mini by Revell. Now, as far as I understand, this is not glue. This is basically a substance that breaks down the plastic oh my god look at that well there we go tip number three how to use Revell Katata the metal application straw has come out so what I'm gonna do is grab a pair of tweezers grab onto the end of it Drag the mother out. Alright, pop that back in there. Bam. Now, as I was saying, this is basically a substance that breaks down. Do you know what? Watch this. Tip number two grease proof paper. Because I know it will melt the model kit. I uh, know it won't melt this little plastic lid but I don't know if it will melt my gloves I don't know if it will melt my chops, my little board so, grease proof paper, boom and toothpick for app applying it now, make sure we've got this the right way around boom bang Make sure these go in the right way around, which is this way. So if you can see, it's got the little ridge on the side there. You've got to make sure that, that ridge is on the inside. The ridge is here on the inside edge. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. This is the thing, inside, outside, make sure the ridge is on the inside. All right, toothpick, a little drop of this on the edge there. And as I was saying before, this will basically melt the plastic it touches. Do you know what, let's get, let's get a little bit of there. It won't get through there. Bam on the end, and in you go. Right, final time of asking. This will basically melt the plastic that it touches, and then it will evaporate, which will make the plastic form back solid again once it turns hard. That sentence didn't make sense, but I am not going to put these the wrong way around. No, 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 no. I'd rather concentrate on, see what, see it's evaporated already on, you can see, look, it's gone. That was it, 20 seconds or so, and it was gone. 
So what we're going to do is keep a lid on this little brute before it's all gone. And then we're back in, last two. Touch on the end there. Make sure that the notch is on the inside edge. Bam. And finally, the last one. Bam. That's all good. Now, let's see if we can get this, these all done and get this top end on. Just a touch. I don't want it to squash out of the side and leave a melt mark on the leg. Now from the test fit, we know that these go on pretty good. Seems like I got an awful lot of glue there. I don't know what happened on that side. And one's in. And two's in. And three's in. And four's in. And I'm going to use this little stick. Stack. So, there we go, just across there. Hmm. Is it standing straight? It appears to be straight. Just like that. Bam. Bamski. There we go. You got a tire rack. Make sure it's square, man. Don't want the tires dropping off. If while well, it's still drying, make sure it's square, man. Looking good. We're looking good. That's one. One down. Should be able to wait for that all to dry up and cure up, get it washed off and get that painted. Boom, bang, done. Okay, so we're back with the second part, one of the little toolboxes. Just have a quick test fit on that. And... So you gotta make sure not to shave off this little lip around the edge here because this actually holds it on. It's literally just around the edges. We'll try and get that cleaned off. So go back in with this little sapphire here. doesn't look like it's gone but it feels like it's gone and that's what's gonna matter on making this paint job look good I don't want to leave a I'd rather leave it over than have a dent in it it's just me and I'm a beginner so what do I know let's find out So you can see that it's really hard to keep it just in the right spot. I'm scratching all down here just to take out these little nubs, but we can fix all of that. They're only tiny scratches. And a perfect toolbox needs some work. Needs a job. 
perfect toolbox needs a job, dog. It's gone. Boom. Boom a later. And then everything's working lovely. Now, I don't really want to get the Ravel contactor outside because it will just turn everything to smush and I won't have a gap between the top and the bottom. And what I could do is do it like that with a little lid open. It might look alright. Would break, but I'd glue it back. Or I could do it closed. Let's have a let's have a think about that. Well, according to the picture, it's posed up like that. But I don't know. I reckon we'll just leave it like that for now. Boom bang. Next. We have the air conditioning replacement, air conditioning servicing unit. Oh, look at that. Get that cut out of there. Snips, snaps. Don't want to leave a hole in the top, so we'll leave it like that. Definitely got to get rid of those little knobs around there. One here. One here. And one here. Get them off. Still gotta make sure I don't squeeze too hard even though these bits are a bit more fun. Bam. Catch this, it won't fit in the hole right here. Because it's definitely not about forcing things to fit. That's for sure. Let's fire a bit off and voila, easy slide. gas tank might need something a bit special for this because I don't think I'll be able to get to these together without some kind of problem but And you know what? I'm going 
gonna put that together. Boom bang! Cement that together, I should say. Melt that together, maybe even. And this time, I'm not trying to save the gap between them. I actually prefer if you could. Wow, that sticks fast. That feels stuck. rough but most of that will evaporate and what's left will get sanded off and I sand my sides perfectly flat well I don't know about perfectly but flatter than that little lump I can see the little raised edge Now, I don't have 15 types of glue. No, I do have 15. But I don't have 15 types of cement. So we're going to use Ravel Contactor for the whole build. Which is as a beginner should. You get a couple bits and pieces and you get it cracking, dog. But look at that. Boom, bang. All right. I'm going to get some more of these bits and pieces put together and I'm going to be back in a minute.
in the next episode we're going to do some tests and lay down that primer we're also going to lay down that base coat and we'll be one step closer to getting this diorama finished as you can see everything's now assembled potential staff members are turning up and we've even got the charity car wash all planned out but that's what it's about isn't it it's just about some imagination and just letting it go so if you don't want to miss the next episode make sure you subscribe to the channel now and you've been watching for an hour so drop a like as well anyway this is 494 garage hitting you with uploads twice a week i'm ds the plastic mechanic and i'm out